the Holy Gospel today from Matthew in the 13th chapter. This continues what was happening last week. Yeah, let's stand up. Uh, last week we had the sower who went out to sow. Here's a second. Jesus, the great farmer. Here he is, farming some more. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to the master, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, well then, do you want us to go and gather the weeds? Oh, but he replied, no, no, for in gathering the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them into bundles to be burned, but gather the weed the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, Lord, explain to us this parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered, well, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are are the children of the evil one. And the enemy so who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and evildoers and they will throw them into the fire, furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Hmm. Well, how good to be here. Haven't been here for a while. So how good to be here. And we've got this wonderful parable. Or maybe it's a parable that it's not so wonderful. It's a pretty hard-hitting parable, actually. Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit is working all the time as we just sang. So come right now and open our hearts and our minds. To your word. Amen. Do you have a garden this year? Well, I have one. And, well, do I have any weeds? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do I have some good plants? Yeah, I've got those too. Yeah. And I, but I have to go out about once a week and pull out the weeds. So, you know, I get out there and oh, no, 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 no. And when I'm done weeding, the ground is bare. And I look, you know, hmm, I like that. So, but then seven days later I go out, the whole place is covered with weeds again. And I gotta keep coming out every week to keep pulling out the weeds. That says something to me about today's gospel because we have Jesus telling a parable and of course a parable is a story with a point. Uh, should be familiar with these parables. A story to make a point, but what's the point? Well, Jesus starts right off this way. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to. And then the parable goes into what the enemies did, right? 
Now, who are the enemies? Ooh. In the Greek language, the same word for devil is the same word for enemy. So devil equals enemy here. But we know elsewhere in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 5, 43, Jesus said we are to love our enemies. And then in Matthew 10, 36, Jesus said your enemies will be the people of your own household. Mm. And then finally in Matthew 22, he said, I will put your enemies under your feet. You're going to control them. So who are our enemies? And shall we love them and, or be afraid of them? Then, of course, we go to verse 36 with the explanation. But Jesus does this in the house, only to, only to the disciples. So in this parable, we have a picture of the judgment of God upon the earth, the whole end of time. The weeds are pulled up and burned, and the weed is gathered into the barn. Now, how do you react to these pictures of judgment? Ooh, you know, God's judgment is certain and sure. And uh, I think we like to avoid it. I don't, nobody wants to talk about judgment. <laughs> we don't like to go into courts, do we? No, we can lose. So, but God's judgment is certain and sure. And we want to, like I say, we want to avoid it. So we sit here a bit uncomfortable when we start talking about judgment. We're going to avoid the subject. Uh, I think we're all very interested in this world, aren't we? Right now, right here, today, our current life. But then to talk about hell, damnation, and well, being thrown into a furnace of fire. Did I come to church for that sort of thing? And perhaps we're even a bit embarrassed by this parable. Embarrassed because, well, this is the conventional dichotomy, you know, heaven up here, hell down there. And then by this fact of this last judgment, it seems so unecumenical, if you will, so unkind. And then, of course, meanwhile, we sit in our nice air-conditioned room on a very hot day, <laughs> with nice music, nice people. Did anybody bring their coffee? Yeah, you see. Did you bring a donut too? No, no, jeez. No donuts at the moment, all right. But we're all comfortable, right? But here comes words, furnace of fire. How does that fit into Jesus' command to love our neighbor? I think we need to go back to the words of the baptismal service, the baptismal service, where it says we are baptized into Christ's death. Baptized into Christ's death. And in a few minutes, in a few minutes, Doug Clark will be baptized into Christ's death. Now, to become a Christian, then, is not just a nice, kind of comfortable, cultural decision we go... Oh, yeah, I joined the church today. No, no. To become a Christian is really to recognize that Jesus has died on the cross in a bloody, painful death for our salvation. To become a Christian involves faith, strong faith, and it really doesn't involve air conditioned, nor apple fritters, sorry. Faith in Jesus, faith in Jesus is the fire of judgment, and we're looking right at it, and it's unpleasant. Sure, not easy to look at the fire of judgment. But you think about this parable, and maybe we said, those people are the weeds. Hmm? But maybe, just maybe, maybe we are the weeds. Could it be that we might be the weeds, and we are the ones who are wasting God's good soil that God has given us. 
and we have lives that are not so godly. In fact, lives that are a bit selfish and arrogant and distant. Well, whatever our excuse is, this parable is an opportunity, an opportunity uh, to rethink our attention on many things of our life, and uh, we don't think about the end of our life very much, do we? No. I guess if we go to a funeral, you know, on those days, we start thinking about the end of our life, but not much usually. But our God knows us. Our God knows us very well, you know, everything that's going on in our life. And so to grasp the meaning of this parable, we have to know the end of the story, the end of the parable. And we, we have to see that God's kingdom will finally win and that death will finally be no more and that every tear will be wiped away. Yesterday we had a funeral. We laid Ken Gelsenleiter uh, to, to rest in Jesus' arms. And Ken, yes, Ken had that kind of a faith he knew the end of the parable. Now, in the parable, there's a very star sharp distinction, as you heard, between the good seed and the bad seed. Yeah, the good seed and the bad seed. The weeds, if you will. But what if you and I can't pick out the good from the bad? Now, we are God's blessed children, but too often we end up playing with the devil and his his legions. And then come the angels, and what are the angels supposed to do? They're supposed to root out the bad stuff, right? Yeah. But Jesus, our Savior, thankfully sees our weak faith and says, oh, wait, angels, wait, 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 don't pull up that plant right now and throw them into the fire. In fact, Jesus says, don't do it right now. I'm going to be the judge on the last day. Yeah, and then on that last day, Jesus is going to take us. And yeah, he's going to, I think he's going to put a little fire to us, as it said in the lesson here. He's going to purify everything that's in us that's bad and needs to be burned away. Because Jesus doesn't want our evil thoughts and our our bad actions in heaven. And of course, as I just said, do you notice it is Jesus? Jesus himself who makes the judgment about who is a weed and who is a wheat. Jesus is the judge. I say that because sometimes we are overzealous weeders. I mean, when I go out in my garden, you know, I'm just like... <laughs> I'm pulling everything out almost. We're overzealous weeders. Now, Matthew wrote this gospel lesson, and you have to wonder, uh, maybe he had overzealous weeders where he was. You know, we want to go in and we want to purify the situation, and we go, those are the bad people, let's get rid of them. Yeah, that seems to be a temptation of all of us in, in every age of life. You know, we get into a weeding frenzy, certain that we know the difference. Your weeds, your wheat. Yeah, we've got it all picked out, and we just know how to deal with weeds, like I do. I know what's weeds in my garden, come on. But Jesus parable makes it clear here that any attempt to root out the weeds is what? It's going to do more damage to the crop than we can imagine. And our weeding frenzy plays out far too many times as we're determined to root out those we don't agree with. You know, they don't have the right interpretation of scripture or the right liturgy or something that we don't agree with. And there are also then people who want to pronounce judgment on those outside of the church, you know, declaring them, well, they're destined to hell. So whether his judgment is focused within the church or without the church, 
such weeding usually does very serious damage to the church and its mission. I guess my word today for you then is let us be gentle, gentle with one another. You know, it's our human nature to look over and see the weeds in our neighbor's garden. Oh yeah, we know what they've done wrong. And we want to pull out the weeds. Let's clean up the mess, we say. But you notice in the end that judgment does come. Oh yes, Jesus promised a judgment. It will happen. But Jesus promised to let us grow. Yeah, he's going to let us grow in his garden. In Jesus' garden. Now at times we're going to be a bit weedy and sinful. And at other times we're going to be nice fruitful plants. Yeah. But Jesus lets us grow. He lets us grow. Jesus gives us a place and a lovely garden, and I think Trinity Church is a lovely garden to grow in, right here. And Jesus nourishes us on the word and the promise. So is judgment coming? Yes, at the end of time. And is salvation in Christ our sure promise? Oh yes, it is our sure promise. And do we want to be fruitful plants in God's garden? Yes, yes, of course we do. The parable ends this way. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of heaven. The righteous will shine like the sun. So today, may we shine like the sun. And may, let's don't worry about our neighbor's weeds. Jesus will take care of the weeds. <laughs>